Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're reading 1 Samuel chapter 18, starting at verse 5. You make somebody very uncomfortable. Why? You intimidate them. You're gifted. You're highly skilled. You do whatever it is that you do, you do it very well. Matter of fact, you probably most likely do it way better than they. They don't like that. They don't like everyone else seeing it. Now that's what happened with Saul and David. Saul was compared to David by his servants, by the praises and the dances. And they showed out how much better David did things than Saul. And at that very moment, all the favor that David had with Saul went right down the drain because now Saul was in a competitive mode and he being king didn't like being compared to someone below him as that someone below him was said to do way better than he. Made him very angry, made him very jealous. And a lot of times you wonder why people come against you on the workforce. Well, that's why. They don't like seeing how well you do things. They don't like knowing that you're so much better than they. So in their minds, you are a threat, not an asset, a threat. And it's sad because at that very moment, their attitude, their treatment of you, everything goes right down the toilet. And you wonder, what is wrong with me? What did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. It's everything you did right that has caused your enemies to rise up against you. Listen to this story and be encouraged. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music for y'all uh, y'all churches that don't believe in musical instruments. Hmm, there it is. All right. And Saul was very wroth. Oh, wait a minute. And the women answered one another as they played and said, this is verse 7, Saul had slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000? And to me, have they ascribed but, uh, but thousands? And what can, he have, what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David. From that day and forward, and it came to pass on the morrow, that was the next day, that the evil spirit from God, check that out, check that out. When people come against you, you don't know what God is setting up. You know that God was going to appoint David as king. So all of this is playing into the scenario. Even when people come against you, God's doing a work. Oh, this is something. Listen. I stumbled on this and I said, I got to read this to my babies the next day. And, uh, huh. and it came to pass on the morrow the next day that the evil spirit from God, remember in Isaiah, God said, I create good and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. There it is. The evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house and David played with his hand as at other times and there was a javelin in Saul's hand and Saul cast that javelin for he said I will smite David even to the wall with it 
and David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David. Check that out. Saul was king. Saul was afraid of David. How many people are afraid of you? This Pat's two cents. How many people are afraid of you? You don't know it because they're trying to intimidate you. Because you intimidate them. And they don't like it. This is verse 12. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people and David behaved himself. How are you behaving yourself under attack? David behaved himself wisely in all his ways and the Lord was with him. God is with you. Keep behaving yourself. Mm, mm, mm. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Yeah. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, behold, my elder daughter, more anyway. That's the rest of the story. And it goes on with more drama and him trying to destroy David and his son, Jonathan, intervening. But listen, we're going to read Psalms 27. When people come against you, it's part of the play. There's a beginning. There's the meat. There's the conclusion. When that curtain goes down, that's the end of the story. God already knows the script from beginning to end. He knows how to navigate and maneuver you to the area in your calling, in your life, in your destiny, where he wants you to land. And in order to get you there, he's got to take you through a few detours and a few obstacles and, yeah, some hurdles you got to jump over. Some battles you got to fight. All that time, David never got hurt. God always made sure he saw danger in time to duck it. God will do the same with you. You must pour your heart out to him. The battle is the Lord's, not yours. Now, let me go on to Psalms 27, and then we're done. And I read. And this I'm speaking over you who are at the workplace, in our church group, and on YouTube. Those of you who are battling on your workplace or in your family. You know, there are always family dynamics too. Sometimes your own parents are intimidated by you or bothered by you going further than they. Or the leadership of the church not liking you being better at what you do than they are at what they do. So they hold you back. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. The Bible didn't say I stumbled and fell. The Bible said they stumbled and fell. Hmm. Even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Check that out. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. You forbid your heart to fear. Though war should rise against me in this, will I be confident? One thing have I desired of the Lord that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. He, not he might. He shall hide me. Not I hope he hides me. He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Jesus. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Climb and maintain. Climb above that storm and look down on it. 
And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacles sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. When was the last time you sang a song of thanks to God in your house? Driving home from the, from the job after being beat up by the devil. Singing praises to God on your job in the devil's face. Hear, O God, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said, Unto thee thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Lead me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies for false witnesses, false witnesses, false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And this is your word, y'all. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's it. I ain't preaching on that. The word said it all by itself. I'm done.